everyone, my name is Morgan and it is just so great to see you here at Trios Kids Online. Did you know that I love to dance? Well, <laughs> I may not be the best dancer in the world, but I'd like to think that maybe what I lack up in talent, I make up for in confidence. There are a lot of things that can make us feel confident, but do you know where your true confidence comes from? Right. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way that God sees you. That's what we've been talking about all month long. And that's what gives you the confidence to be your truest self. When you know how much God loves you, you can take on anything life throws your way. Hmm. Like I said earlier, I might not be the best dancer ever, but I've got a surprise for you. I've actually brought in someone who I think could earn that title. Everyone at home, please join me in welcoming Lucas! Come on, Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I have another surprise for you. Everyone welcome. Honey! This is my friend Lucas, and this is Honey, Matt and I's new puppy. We love her so much. But Lucas, great dance moves, great dance moves. So everyone, right where you are at home, I want you to stand up on your feet because it's time to just dance. So Luke is here. He's gonna show us a really easy dance move. And when he shows... Level up. Level up. It's going to get a little harder every time. Are you up for the challenge? Are you? Or do you think they're ready for the challenge? I think they are. I think so too. Okay, let's get started. And... Alright, level up. What's this dance move called now? The spinorama. The spinorama? Okay. Whoa, I'm a little bit dizzy now. Me too. But level up. The chicken. <laughs> this is hard holding a puppy. And level up, the pharaoh. Ooh, the pharaoh! Good one! God, this is hard, I can barely do it. Are you guys doing it at home? I hope so. Okay, wow, that was epic. <laughs> that was so much fun. Thank you, Lucas, for teaching us how to dance better. It really helped when you broke down the moves so that we could understand them better. I feel so much more confident in my skills now. Hey, no problem. I'm excited to be here with you guys and learning how to be confident. But stay on your feet because now we're going to be warmed up. Let's keep dancing and we're going to sing some worship together. Love it. Let's go. That's how I'm feeling It's impossible For me believing That I can't, that I won't Make it happen Just watch what I got All the strength that I have in me I'm gonna stay
the best around. Not gonna feel too good to do. Hey everybody, my name is Graham, and today I'm following in the groundbreaking footsteps of my ancestors. I'm making a mixtape. You see, back in olden times, when someone wanted to listen to music, they needed one of these cassette tapes. And if you were fortunate enough to have one of these dual cassette recorders with high speed dubbing, you could put up to 90 minutes of your favorite songs onto one rad mixtape. I'm making this mixtape for my friend Erica, who's been running a lot of 5Ks lately. The Eye of the Tiger. And I'm only picking super encouraging songs, that way Erica will have confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wouldn't it be simpler just to make a playlist that Erica could listen to on her phone? Maybe, but this is all a part of the plan. My plan is to give this mixtape to Erica so she can listen to it while she's running. She probably doesn't have a tape player, so, so she'll borrow mine. And if she carries this thing around with her everywhere, she'll build up arm strength. Oh, I didn't say it was a good plan. Oh man. Another one bites the dust. Sometimes plans don't work out the way you expect. But as you'll see in today's story, sometimes there's a bigger and better plan. Oh, gotta switch to side two, I guess. How did people even survive back then? The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Joshua, chapters five and six. For 40 years, God's people wandered the desert. At last, they reached the land that God had promised them. Joshua led them to the edge of the rushing Jordan River. The priests will carry the Ark of the Lord. The Ark was a beautiful chest that reminded the Israelites that God was with them. As soon as the priests step into the Jordan, it will stop flowing. Sure enough, as soon as the foot of the first priest touched the edge of the river, the waters parted. God's people crossed on dry land, just as God had led them through the Red Sea 40 years before. God did this so that all the nations on earth would know that he is powerful. Soon after, the Amorites and Canaanites living in the land had heard what God had done. Fearful, they retreated back to their towns, including the high-walled city of Jericho. Oh, great. Like, how do we fight them now? God will show us the way. That evening, Joshua left camp and snuck toward Jericho. The walls loomed impossibly strong. So tall. As he turned, Joshua saw a man standing nearby holding a sword. Who are you? Uh, are you on our side or the side of our enemies? I have come as the commander of the Lord's army. Joshua knelt down face to the ground. What message does my Lord have for me? Take off your sandals. The place you are on is holy ground. Joshua tugged off his shoes. I have handed Jericho over to you. Joshua listened carefully as the Lord delivered a message, a battle plan unlike any other. Wow, uh, okay, uh, we'll do it, Lord. Joshua called for the priests. Get the Ark of the Covenant, and I need seven of you to march in front of the Ark with trumpets. Sorry, just warming up. <laughs> Joshua gathered the army too. Time to move out. Like, do we get to attack now? March around the city. Just, like, go in circles? Some of you march ahead of the Ark of the Lord, and the rest of you march behind. Can we at least shout and stuff? Hey, Jericho, you guys smell like cheese! Don't give a war cry or raise your voices until the day I tell you to shout. But the priests must blow their trumpets. Forward! March! The entire army, including the priests, marched one time around Jericho, just as the Lord had instructed Joshua. Now can we get them? Back to camp, men. We march again tomorrow. 
The next morning, the Israelites marched around the city once again. And then on day three, once again on day four, not to mention day five, and once again on day six. We march again at sunrise. Uh, I have blisters. At dawn on the seventh day, the army and priests formed their strange parade once more. But this time, once they finished marching around the city one time, Joshua called out. Keep marching. Again? My feet are killing me. The Lord has told me we must march around the city seven times today. On the seventh time around, the priests blew a long blast on their trumpets. Now shout! The Lord has given you the city. And the Lord! As the shouts of the Israelites rang out in the clear morning air, something incredible happened. The massive walls of Jericho began to tremble. The gates shivered and quaked. Jagged cracks ran through the heavy stones. Rocks began to tumble from the tops of the walls. Little rocks, large stones, giant boulders, until at last the walls collapsed, crashing in on themselves. The ground quaked and plumes of dust burst into the air. As the air cleared, the Israelites stared in amazement. The city of Jericho stood wide open. Take the city! With nothing standing in their way, the Israelites charged right in. That day, they completely defeated the city of Jericho. God was with Joshua, and he became well known everywhere in the land. When God told Joshua to take over the city of Jericho, Joshua probably thought of a battle plan. And I bet his battle plan didn't involve marching around the city wall for a week blowing trumpets. But Joshua followed God, and the Israelites took the city. He had confidence that God's plan was bigger and better. And that's not the only time God proved his plan was better. When Jesus, God's son, died on the cross, Jesus' disciples had to wonder, what is God thinking? Then in three days, when Jesus came back to life, it all became clear. God's plan is always better. The truth is, none of us know what the future holds. Your family might have to move out of the neighborhood or out of the state. You might get sick or break a bone. You might not get put on the team you tried out for. But when things don't go according to your plan, that's when you need to remind yourself, God's got you. You may not always know what God's plan is, but keep following him and have confidence that his plan is bigger and better. That's the one thing to remember today. God's plan is the best plan. My plan to make a mixtape for Erica is not the best plan. But it's still a lot of fun. Ah, oh. Oh no, it's unraveled. Oh wait, no worries. I've got an idea. Huh? Just like my ancestors. I'll see you next time. we can't always see how things will work out in God's plan. Think about what it was like for Joshua and the Israelites when they looked up at the big city walls of Jericho. They had to trust God's plan in order to win the battle and live in the land God had promised for them. Or think about what it was like for Jesus' disciples when Jesus died on the cross. Yeah. They must have been so confused about how such a sad and awful thing could be such a big part of God's plan. Mm. But everything made sense later when they saw how Jesus came back to life and when Jesus explained why everything had happened the way it did. Exactly, so true. You know, sometimes you can't see exactly how things will turn out, but when you can keep following God and choosing to live His way, you can have confidence in Him. You can trust that His plan is always the best. God's plan is the best plan. Can you all say that with me? Ready? God's plan is, is the best plan. plan. You might not always know what God has planned for your life or for your family. Sometimes things happen that are confusing and just don't make sense. But through it all, you can trust God no matter what. You so can know, true. You, you can know that 
His plan is the best plan. Yes, I love that. Hey, why don't we all pray together today? God, thank you so much that we can have confidence in you. Thank you for loving each and every single one of us. Thank you for just everyone that is watching today and a part of our Treehouse Kids online community. We love you so much, God. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And parents, we encourage you to print out the parent guide on our website to walk through some of the activities and questions with your kids about today's lesson. Mm -hmm. Or you can keep watching and press pause on the next few slides. See you next week. Bye, see ya.